Sunday, June 3rd, 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the big volcano on the big island, Mauna Loa. Is it starting to become active? We're going to take a look at the recent earthquakes, the history of Mauna Loa and some of the eruptions of the past. And as we all know, history does repeat itself. Hopefully, that's not the case this time, but it's definitely a possibility. One thing we've been watching with regard to Mauna Loa are the earthquake trends and the uh, webcam. There's a temporary web webcam that's been placed up at the uh, summit of Mauna Loa. We're going to take a look at that here in a minute. And there's a reason why they put that camera up there is to keep an eye on things because it is the largest active volcano on Earth. But on the big island of Hawaii are some really cool things. Um, things that I've used for many, many years. The Keck Observatory, the Canada-France-Hawaii Telescope, which I'm going to show you guys all of these links here in a minute. The Gemini Observatory. Those three I've used and seen some absolutely amazing photographs of the sky. Uh, every night they're hunting planets, supernova. Um, really a fascinating fascinating place would love to be a part of it but unfortunately I'm 3,000 miles away but um, love to look at their pictures and uh, videos that they have online but anyway we've also got the University of Hawaii telescope that's a 2.2 meter telescope and the James Clerk Maxwell telescope all of these are on top of Mauna Kea which is slightly taller than Mauna Loa which is right there Mauna Loa, however, does have an observatory, which sits right here. This is where they measure, actually, I think they take measurements of CO2 here, and obviously a lot of other things. There's an observatory out here. They do many different things here. One of the, thing, the things that they do is keep a close eye on the summit, the caldera of Mauna Loa, because it's still very active. It's been active they say there's some reports that say um, after the large earthquake back in uh, 19, or 1868 I think it was a 7.9 earthquake the largest that was ever recorded out here it triggered the Helena slump and they say that what we're experiencing today or what we're seeing today are uh, continuations of that event aftershocks from the near 8.0 earthquake that was triggered by an eruption of Mauna Loa. So that's why it's very important to keep a close eye on Mauna Loa and what Mauna Loa is doing. But I wanted to show you guys the uh, observatories that are on top of Mauna Kea. This is where they're at right here with regard to the island on the northeast side of the big island. Here's the Keck Observatory. And you can come here and pretty much every night they're recording. Some nights, if it's super, super cloudy, you won't see too much, obviously. But you have a stellar view of the night sky. No kidding. It just doesn't really get much better than that. The Canada-France-Hawaii telescope is also situated on the uh, top of Mauna Kea. For some reason, it's been down for the last several weeks. I don't know exactly why, but normally it, too, is a great source of information. This is the Gemini telescope. And the Gemini is located to the right of the Keck Observatory, I think. Yeah, right there. A little more east, southeast of the Keck Observatory. But you can see this one, um, this is from two nights ago, captured a green meteor. And I'll post the link to all of these incredible uh, sources of information down below in the description box. Now on to earthquakes. Mauna Kea, and we're going to take a look at Kilauea, some new cracks that have recently been discovered. Mauna Loa, the largest active volcano on Earth. It's not the biggest volcano, there's super volcanoes. This is the largest active volcano on Earth. Um, sets over 13,000 feet high at the summit. That's just a little over two miles, two and a half miles. This is the summit here. You can't see it very well on the earthquake site. But what I want to show you with regard to the earthquakes, if you've been following this every day, like, like I have, granted, I'm not a geologist. I don't live on the island. I'm not an expert when it comes to, you know, the personalities of these 
eruptions and volcanoes in general. I'm an observer. I'm an observer of earth changes in general. It's just what I like to do. So this is an earth change, and, and obviously I'm very drawn to it, and I want to learn. That's why I'm here. But I'd like to try to pass on some observations that I see that I think are important. Whether they're significant or not, um, you know, that remains to be seen. But one thing I have noticed as an observer that observes every day is the pattern and the trend of these earthquakes. Um, and you can see they're very, very uh, condensed. There's a lot. 3,721 over a seven-day period. That's the most I've ever seen on here. I've been watching this for years, so I've never seen that many. So that's an all-time high, at least for me personally. The trend, the pattern of these earthquakes is moving towards the north, northwest side of the Big Island in the direction of Mauna Loa. Like I said, I've been watching this for, for weeks since it began. There were never any earthquakes outside of, you know, the, the Kilauea summit. Now they're starting to migrate across the entire island. And there have been a series of earthquakes near the summit of Mauna Loa. So they were offshore after the 6.9 earthquake. There were several aftershocks out here. They have since uh, diminished and moved. All this energy is moving inland. So I don't know exactly what that means, but it means something. Okay, there's energy on the move. So is there something bigger moving with regard to, say, Mauna Loa? Mauna Kea, I don't think, is active. Mauna Loa. They're saying what we're seeing here is the side effects are an after or continuation of what happened nearly 150 years ago. But we've been watching the cameras. This is a thermal cam of Mauna Loa overlooking the summit. And they say this is an image from a temporary camera. And there's a reason why they have this temporary camera keeping an eye on the summit of Mauna Loa. This is, you know, the biggest game in town. So if this thing starts to get active, um, like it has in the past, it's uh, what created the very large earthquake back in uh, 1868. And it was an eruption of Mauna Loa that created a 7.9 earthquake that created the Helena Slump that generated a tsunami. So that's the importance of what's going on up here at 13,000 feet at the top of Mauna Loa. Because if this thing does erupt, historically, we know what's happened, or what can happen. Um, hopefully it won't, but I'm just saying, these are things that you know we need to watch, and we, we try to learn from them. History probably won't repeat itself exactly each event and situation is always unique and that's with regard to every event that I've ever observed you know they're all different in their own way but history does repeat itself but it's always in a unique way unique to its own event but you can see here um, Kilauea is starting to you know it's still letting off steam it's starting to change the shape of the caldera there are new cracks that are visible um, they're, they're just updated again. Look at the new cracks. This is inside the caldera. See the new cracks? It's expanding. It's getting bigger. So that's just another sign that the energy is very persistent. It's very strong. The earthquakes are continuing to increase. I've never seen. In fact, the number has increased since I started doing this video. This was when I first start getting uh, the research on the desktop for this video presentation. There was a quake right near the summit of uh, Mauna Loa. They're small, but so are all these over here at Kilauea. But they could lead up to, you know, bigger ones. Hopefully not, but there's a lot of energy on the move right now. A lot. So, got to keep an eye on Mauna Loa. Now, this is a look at another temporary camera that's been set up in the lower east rift zone. This is down down below uh, Kilauea. And as you can see, this is from the overnight hours, and the fountain is still spewing lava. And it's all moving east, southeast. In fact, let me update this. It's probably daytime by now. Yeah, it's daytime, but you can still see the, the fountain. 
and it's not showing any signs of letting up. It's been like that for several days. Weeks? So still very, very persistent. I've got some images that I want to share with you guys, and I want to show you something here real quick before I uh, lose my train of thought, because i got a lot of information that I wanted to share. This is my personal app. I've been sharing this with you guys since all this began, and I'm just astonished at this number here. This number normally is anywhere from three to 500. Uh, 500 being a very, very busy day. 300 being an average day. And this is globally, according to the way my app is configured. Okay, 1,927 is totally unchartered waters for me. And you can see where the majority of these are coming from. Volcano, Hawaii. And now some of these Volcano Hawaii signatures that we're seeing are coming from Mauna Loa. So that means the energy at the summit of Mauna Loa is increasing. So 1927, at least for me personally, and my personal earthquake app that I use on my phone, um, is quite unprecedented. In fact, the name of the app, if you guys want to know, the one that I use is called Quake Feed. And you can get it at the iTunes store. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's free. But um, the way I have this one configured, typically the numbers are 300 an average day. Even sometimes it gets below 300. Um, 500 and a little above 500, you know, there's quite a bit of activity. 1,927 is just unbelievable. I read somewhere, I wanted to share with you guys, where state Mauna Loa. Oh, here we go. Mauna Loa is among the... Uh, is among the Earth's most active volcanoes, having erupted 33 times since 1843. It has produced large flows of basalt that have reached the ocean eight times since 1868. It last erupted in 1984, and this was right after the 1983 eruption of Kilauea. So there are some similarities with regard to this thing erupting after Kilauea erupts. It has happened before. When lava flow came within 7.2 miles of Hilo, the largest populated area on the Big Island. So with regard to 33 eruptions since 1843, this is what I did. And I computed some averages. These are not uh, perfect, but they are pretty close. You know, within about a year of some of them are right on. But on average, what we're looking at is an eruption every five years. It's basically what that equates to. Um, 1968, there was an eruption uh, in 1983, 1984. And it's overdue, basically. 2018 is the next one. And it hasn't erupted in 2018. But again, this is just an average. It's not perfect. But on average, this thing erupts about every five years. Sometimes it may be nine in between eruptions. Sometimes it may be two, you know. But on average, this thing erupts about every five years. So these things are, are very, they're a very big part of our planet and, and, our, and the mechanics of our planet. And those are something, uh, those are things that I like to study. I am by no means a volcano volcanist or a geologist okay i'm just a guy that has a sincere interest in in how the planet works simple as that and i do watch i'm a watchman so 1984 eruption of mauna loa if you go back to my map or my calculations you know 1983 is kind of how the five-year sequence went and i just put this together myself based off of 33 eruptions over the course of X amount of years. On average, that would be about every five years. So 2018 could be, you know, another eruptive year. Doesn't necessarily guarantee it by no means, but I always try to apply numbers to, you know, things in life because basically everything is numbers from, you know, the air pressure in the tires to your car or truck to your you know, the time of your watch, to how much battery life, you know, the percentages on your phone, your computer, how much memory you have on your computer, all that, everything is numbers, 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 numbers. So will it erupt again? It's a very good possibility, but I, I'm not psychic and I don't know. But 
it's a possibility. So there's a lot of information here, guys. I have researched this in depth. I wanted to see what historically uh, happens when Mauna Loa has erupted in the past. That's all. And in the past, when Mauna Loa has erupted, there were very big earthquakes. And historically, uh, not, but not always, not always. In fact, the biggest earthquake, though, was when Mauna Loa erupted. Um, historically, though, one thing that, that uh, is very similar after Kilauea erupted, Mauna Loa has erupted in the past. It's not a uh, it's not a, a, a common trend, but it has happened in the past. Uh, 1984 was one of those years. Kilauea erupted in '83, and kind of has still been erupting ever since then. Mauna, uh, Mauna Loa erupted in 1984. The thermal cam up top of the summit of of uh, Mauna Loa. And what we're looking for, and you can see the, the increase in temperature, it's going up as the sun is rising. So overnight I've been watching it, because when I, when I get up at like 4 a.m., it's 1 a.m. in Hawaii. And by the time I, you know, get a cup of coffee, get woke up, start looking around at different things that I look at every day. And this has been one of my pit stops since all this began. Generally what happens is this. This number here. This graph, again, is numbers on the side. Generally, this gets warmer as the sun rises because it's a thermal camera. But what they're looking for are hot spots with regard to magma or anything like that, at least at this point. Right now, all the action still continues with uh, Kilauea and the uh, summit of Kilauea. Let's update this one. It should be ready. Yep. Still got a lot of steam, a lot of steam and ash coming out of that. This is a look at the experimental geoelectric field over the United States from June 2nd through June 3rd. And you can see we were in a stream of uh, uh, high-speed solar wind from a coronal hole. And this geoelectric map shows that. You can see the energy that was detected in the atmosphere. And this isn't visible with the naked eye if you're down too low. If you were up in the higher latitudes, you may have seen some auroras, but chances are none of us did down here in the lower 48. But you can see there was a small disturbance in the atmosphere with regard to solar wind, and that's what's picked up here on this experimental map. You can find at the website right here under the geoelectric map. Real-time lightning, let's check on that real quick. I haven't checked it today. 52,000. And again, most of the activity is coming out of Europe, Central Europe, the Middle East. A lot of action over there today. So a lot of energy on the move, guys. That's a big update on uh, Hawaii. I wanted to touch base on the earthquakes. Just from my perspective of watching this for over a month now, every single day, these earthquakes are moving across the island. They're small, but the, it tells us that the energy pattern is migrating this way for some reason. You know, is it Mauna Loa waking up? Don't know, but definitely got to keep an eye on Mauna Loa. That's the largest active volcano on planet Earth. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a super day. Be safe out there.